In this massively globalized world, millions of people travel from one country to another on a daily basis. To prove their identity and nationality on foreign lands, travelers are required to carry a traveling document, usually a passport issued by the government of their native country, except when they are traveling between nations that allow free flow of humans across borders. In order to get a passport, you need to belong to a country, which may seem like a pretty normal thing, but not everyone in the world enjoys this privilege. Around 12 million people in the world are stateless, which means they don't belong to any country. They can't cross international borders to travel to any other country unless they obtain refugee travel documents. Furthermore, just because you hold a passport issued by a country doesn't automatically make you a citizen of that nation. Latvia issues non-citizen passports to individuals who are not citizens of Latvia but have families who have resided in the area since the Soviet era. People born in the outlying possession of the United States, American Samoa and the Swain Islands are United States nationals and not United States citizens. They carry US passports but are not allowed to vote in federal or any state elections. Common people in North Korea aren't allowed to have passports even though they are citizens of that nation. Among all rules and anomalies of the colourful world of passports, there are more than 200 government bodies from 195 recognised sovereign countries in the world that can issue passports to their people. Apart from that, the European Union has a list of 180 passports that are fictional, mostly intended for fun, and don't carry any value. This includes passport for Alaska, passport for Texas, and even world passport. On the same list, there's also a section for camouflage passport, and this is probably the strangest of them all. Unlike others, this passport isn't intended for fun and is designed to fool the holder into believing that the passport is, in fact, a real one. It looks pretty normal from the inside and outside, follows all basic guidelines, but there is one fatal flaw. The country it says it's issued from doesn't exist. Ceylon is the former name of Sri Lanka, an island nation south of India in the Indian Ocean. The country changed its name in 1972 after it became a republic and has been using this new name on all official documents since then. So clearly this passport can't be used to cross borders, but still hundreds of people around the world carry such passports with them while travelling overseas. The purpose is to hide the real identity of the traveller and provide false identification to be used in extreme emergency situations where revealing the real passport and hence nationality could be imprudent, dangerous or bring unwelcome attention. The concept of camouflage passports originated in the 1980s, where American travellers became prime targets of hijacking and international violence on an ever-increasing scale. In 1979, American citizens were held hostage by Iranians because of their nationality, and in 1985, a US citizen was murdered on the hijacked plane TWA Flight 847 because he carried an American passport. These incidents made Donna Walker, who was accredited for the creation of the camouflage passports, realize the need for documents to help Americans fake their nationality in emergency situations abroad. She started by asking the Sri Lankan embassy whether they still had rights to the former name Ceylon, and finding that they did not, went on to design and produce hundreds of passports in different country names, trading as the International Documents Service. She sold these passports to her clients around the world for a couple of hundred dollars. She would add additional pieces of documentation, such as a library card or driving license supposedly for use inside the non-existent country, to add authenticity to the traveller's fake nationality. During the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait in 1990, a group of European oil executives were able to use camouflage passports to pass through Iraqi checkpoints and escape to Jordan. After the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1991, Camouflage became popular among German businessmen who wanted to avoid lingering resentment when they travelled in Europe. Today, camouflage passports are mainly sold online in the name of more than two dozen little-known countries that no longer exist or have changed their name. Mostly, these are former colonies that change their name on gaining independence, or use the names of places or political subdivisions that exist within a real country but have never issued or cannot issue passports. 
The motive is to sound familiar, but not too familiar, in deceiving a customs, immigration or police officer into believing that a bearer is a person from a small, unimportant and faraway country that is not an enemy or, in a terrorist situation, that the bearer is not a potentially high-value hostage. In simple words, a not very interesting man from a not very interesting country. Camouflage passports sound like a good idea until the legalities come into the picture. This is where things get cloudy. After 9-11, the US government restricted the selling and possession of such passports despite no laws being broken if they are used for their intended purpose only. These passports fall in the category of fantasy passports, which means that they do not imitate a real passport in use somewhere in the world and are technically a toy. However, reports suggest that these documents are also used in criminal activity, including terrorism and money laundering, and the majority of camouflage passports are bought for these purposes. Camouflage passports are still legal in Australia, New Zealand, and all of the European Union. Even then, a traveller can still get into trouble if a customs officer considers it carrying two valid passports from two different countries. Furthermore, outsmarting a dangerous person by sharing a fake passport has additional dangers of its own. It's actually a question of risk versus risk. <laughs>